take the picture and I almost slipped and fell. <laughs> Everybody, it's Friday, July 12th. It's 6.22 a.m. We're on our way to Starbucks and we're going to be getting something. We're going to be getting $10.59 for 3.6 miles. Let's get on over there. So I got up at my usual time this morning, which was about 3.30 a.m. And I looked outside and I saw that there were quite a few clouds and it was really feeling uh, humid. So I had to go check on my uh, patio door to make sure it was secure enough so that it could handle any type of monsoon rain that could be coming in. I guess that door, it doesn't have enough um, uh, of enough coverage, like, uh, you know, like, um, what do you call it? Like a, like a patio covering to really protect it. So that, so that way, uh, you know, that way the, the rain, when it starts to pour rain, it doesn't just, uh, you know, come at that door at full force. And the rain, if, uh, without me sealing up that door, the rain pushes its way in, into the cracks and crevices of the door uh, and then it starts to um, you know damage uh, the uh, you know damage the house so I had to get out there before sunrise before it gets too hot and I have this special uh, uh, stuff called uh, caulking cord and it's basically it's like a it's like a um, it's like a, 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 a rope of putty that is real pliable and a little bit tacky, a little bit sticky, and it makes it so that you can um, seal up any kind of um, tiny openings or, you know, tiny openings that would allow water to enter into the house or in between the walls of the house. It works really good. I got it on Amazon. It's called, I think it's just called caulking rope, which I had never heard of. I've heard of caulking before, you know, that liquid goop that you that you kind of shoot into crevices and then it, you let it dry and it, and it seals things up. But this stuff is removable. It's just, it's just like a putty, but it comes like in the shape of a, of a rope. And it works really good. So I had to apply that though this morning. So there I was outside at like, I don't know, 5 a.m. getting that taken care of. And then uh, I was out of breath because, you know, it's so hot. Or even at this early in the morning, it's, it's already 96 degrees this morning. But I got it done, and now we're here at Starbucks to pick up the order, so let's do it. It took a long time. We're going to be going seven minutes from here, 2.4 miles. It's a leave at the door, and that's it. Let's go. There are so many different types of people that do this gig work. It is so funny. There was a guy uh, in there or who's, who came out just after me out of the door, and he looked like he was one of those Harry Krishna or I don't know he just looked like one of those people who like lives one of these alternative lifestyles with his with his crazy outfit and his I don't know I can't even describe how he looked he just looked unusual and um, you know he kind of looked like uh, Middle Eastern slash Hindu Indian slash you know slash uh, you know Buddhist slash I don't know what just like a mix a hodgepodge of uh, different things so I couldn't quite pin down what it was but it was unusual and uh, in this job when you go to all these different places and you see the other gig workers you do see like all different types of people you see um, young and old people who look really poor people who look like they're just middle class uh you see 
uh, uh, people who are um, cross-dressers and uh, you see transsexuals, you see uh, just such a, I mean, you see the, the complete cross-section of the, of the population that it, it makes it just so interesting to know that this this kind of work is just open to anybody. So it makes it kind of interesting when you uh, see them in person, you know, because you know that this job is just, you just sign up and if there's an opening and you have the car and you don't have a, you know, a, a, you don't have a, um, a record that's gonna cause them to be concerned about you delivering to people's houses, you get the, you get the work. So it's just very interesting. So I think I like the democratization of this job. I do like that. Now they do, they, uh, Uber Eats, $7 for 16 miles. No, they do have a limit on how many people they, they can let in though. So once they reach a certain amount of people, and this goes for DoorDash and Uber Eats, if they have just too many people, they stop accepting people into the um, program. And then you have to um, just wait until an opening comes up. All right, we're almost there. All right, we're inside of McDonald Ranch, and uh, it's just a half a mile to go until we get there. It's nice today. I Oh, shoot, I forgot to clean the lens on my phone. I noticed yesterday that everything didn't look as sharp, but I think it had to do with, with the atmosphere. I think sometimes if the atmosphere is a little bit gray, it does, the, the quality of the video isn't as good. Because I'm so used to every one of my videos looking so crystal clear when they come out. And this one did not. It, uh, the one I did yesterday, it, didn't, it looked more grayish. But I guess the, the light has everything to do with how well the video comes out. And I get, I get spoiled because almost every day here in Vegas, it's sunny and crystal clear. So my videos always come out sunny and crystal clear. <laughs> So when I see that they don't, I'm always like, is there something wrong with my phone? Why does it look so, so gray? And, it, and I'm sure in other parts of the country, that's normal. They just, they just expect it. Um, I've had people comment on how, how clear my videos look. And they're always asking me like, oh, what type of camera do you have? You must have something really fancy. I'm like, no, it's just an old phone. I just have an old backup phone that I have and I just use that. It's like no big deal. I'm looking for the house. Uh, is it this one? It is this one. Okay, where's your front door? All right, let me turn it around. Oh wait, is it right here? God, these houses are so big. It's always hard to figure out where the front door is because they're so massive. All right, I think we're here, let's do it. Wow, that last house had a beautiful courtyard. They had this uh, walkway that became like a bridge and then there was water that flowed on underneath the walkway and then to the left and right was, of course, was water. And to the right were all these giant koi fish. It was so pretty. I don't know how they keep those koi fish alive because the temperature here gets so hot. So they must have some type of system in place to make sure the water stays at the right temperature because there's no way those those koi fish could survive in this kind of heat that water gets so hot it gets like a bathtub you know because the sun is so strong so they must have a type of cooling system that keeps the uh keeps the water at the right temperature i would think because there's no other way to do it the fish would just go belly up well, it's quiet as can be, so we'll just see what happens next. 
Yesterday I lost my dash uh, while I was working on the video uh, in between shifts and I set an alarm. I have one of those Amazon devices and I set my alarm to uh, tell me when it was time to, to pause and unpause my DoorDash, but it didn't go off. I don't know if it maybe somebody in the house turned it off or I don't know. Something happened, but it was gone. <laughs> And uh, I didn't hear it, and I lost my dash, and that was just the way it went. So I'm not going to use that, that device anymore. I have a, a, a timer app on my, on my secondary phone, and I'll just set that. And there's no way anybody in the house is going to tinker with that. So for sure, I'll be able to hear that when that goes off. So it, was a, it, it messed me up yesterday and cost me, of course, money. And, uh, but whatever. Uh, just you live and you learn <laughs> all right we got our next one from uber eats we're gonna first go to coffee bean and tea leaf and then we're gonna go to einstein bagels we're getting uh 13 dollars and five cents for 5.7 miles let's get on down there all right while we're here in the district you're getting a fantastic view of the sun rising <laughs> what could be better than this and uh the 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 orders that we're going to be picking up are for the same person, so we only have to go to two, two restaurants or two, two pickups, and then we're going to have just one, one drop-off, and that's going to do her. So all I got to do now is find a place to park, and then I can go in and get that coffee, and then we can move on and, and get the Einstein bagels. All right, here, let's park it. The app, uh, after I uh, confirmed the pickup at uh, Coffee Bean, the app said I couldn't complete the pickup, that I was too far away from the restaurant. And I'm like, I'm too far away from the restaurant. And I was like, am I at the wrong Coffee Bean? I thought, oh no. But she handed me the order and the customer's name matched up with the one I was gonna get. And I was like, what is going on? Something that I might doing something wrong. And so then the app, uh, then the app says you have arrived and it showed coffee bean. I'm like, okay. So I did the whole thing again. I pressed, you know, confirm or pick, you know, pick up complete. And then it just went through just fine. So I don't know what happened. Maybe that, I guess maybe the GPS was, you know, malfunctioning. I don't know. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I'm like, why Why is this app saying this? And now it's suddenly saying everything's fine. So it must have been some type of glitch. So anyway, we're now on our way to uh, Einstein Bagels and hopefully everything goes smooth there and won't have any problems. Uh, the pickup for uh, Coffee Bean was fine. There was a dog that just kept barking and barking. So. I don't think the dog was barking at me. I think the dog was just barking in general. I think it was a barker. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder, like, why do you bring your dog to the public settings if you know your dog doesn't behave? I guess some people, when they're brand new dog owners, they're just so excited to have the dog. They don't want to be separated from their dog, so they take the dog everywhere they go. That's that's my best guess on why why they were doing what they were doing. Uh, I'm gonna take a shortcut to get to Einstein Bagels. It's a lot faster and less miles if I keep going straight. So that's what I'm gonna do next. So the next time you see me should be at Einstein Bagels. Just remember that somebody in the comments liked when I talked about uh, financial advice. So I guess I can tell you a little bit more financial advice. So uh, I already talked about CDs, certificates of deposit. And I talked about 
Roth IRAs, and those are the two biggest things for retirement. And uh, I didn't really talk much about how to, you know, saving strategies. You should always come up with a way to figure out how to save money every month. And I know a lot of people find that to be difficult, but you'll find that if you just set yourself with a minimum amount of money that you can set aside. Now this assumes that you don't have high interest rate debt because if you have high interest rate debt, you cannot <laughs> you cannot focus on saving because that debt is going to take you under and it's so dangerous. Credit card debt is one of the most dangerous things you can get involved in. Uh, up and it's right up there with student loan debt. Those are one of the most, the two most dangerous types of debt you can get involved in in your lifetime, because uh, they don't really hold, have that much value unless you're getting a degree in something that's going to pay you a significant amount of money then otherwise it's not worth it. Like if you're getting a degree in let's say like graphic design or if you're getting a degree like in art or cook or even like cooking, like coronary schools and stuff, don't waste your time. Unless you're unless you have some sort of special skill that's gonna make you surpassed and be above and beyond and you highly believe in your talents. If you are that good, you don't even need to go to these darn schools. You can just do your own thing. That's just what I don't understand about why people take those kind of risks. But anyway, first get yourself out of that kind of debt. Because that debt is deadly. Deadly to the core. Um, and so, uh, once you're out of that, then figure out how you can set aside just a small amount of money. Even if it's as little as $50 a month. If you set it aside, it will accumulate over your lifetime and you will grow it as you slowly start to change your, because as you age through life, you come through many opportunities in life that are going to present you with windfalls of money. So, I mean, if you're a type of person that at least is actively involved in developing your career through life. You will have windfalls. You will have moments where suddenly you're getting paid much more than you were before. And you have to increase your, your savings to be in, in sync with that. So, But you have to first get into the habit of saving and investing. Once you're in the habit of doing it, it becomes second nature. And then you don't even think about it. You're like, well, of course I do. This is the, I'm saving for my future. So, But when you, first, when you first do it, you feel a little bit silly because you think, well... Well, this is such a tiny amount of money, who cares? Well, it matters. Just like brushing your teeth every day, it matters. All right, we're here at Einstein Bagels. It. All right, we're heading off to the customer. Five minutes, 1.2 miles. It looks like a business, and but yet it says meet at the door, and we have a gate code, and then a building number, and then an apartment number. So I don't think it is a business. I think it's maybe it's a home business, and they thought they could advertise. I don't know. It's really weird. We'll figure it out when we get there, folks. Let's see if they drop their mapping pin in the right place. And hopefully they did. They seem like they're, they're professional Uber Eats customers because they've done a double order. And usually people that are skilled enough to order from two different restaurants at the same time, that usually means they know what they're doing. So, but we'll see. 
We shall find out shortly. They've, their little blue icon is activated, so they know I'm here in the complex, and they must be just drooling. Where's my food? <laughs> Where's my food? Let's see if they did it right. Well, if they did it right, then I will be able to find you no problem. It's showing me that you're in the building just right here so let's see if you did it right yes this is the correct building you you're doing it like a pro like a pro You'll find that out in some time But when the things on your mind Are all considered a crime Communication aside We'll all just fight till we die Is this an argument? Or just the start of it? Either way I don't wanna be a part of it Can I just get some space? I don't have the heart for this I can't be picking up the pieces Fixing scars from this Is this an argument? Or just the start of it? I wanna drive away So I can be so far from it Okay, so that's dropped off And the customer didn't answer the door, even though they put meat at the door, they didn't answer. And then in their instructions, they put leave it at the door. And so I was just like, wait a minute, if you want me to leave it at the door, why didn't you select leave it at the door? So I was like, oh, which, which instruction am I supposed to follow? So I knocked and I rang the bell and there's just of course there's no response they're obviously just waiting for me to leave so uh yeah so i messaged them says i'm leaving it at the door and then i just headed out because what else am i supposed to do and then and then i hate when they do that because then you wonder are they going to be upset that you rang the doorbell and knocked you know what i mean because now they in their mind they're like he didn't follow my instructions <laughs> He didn't do what I said. All right, we got something else coming in here. Uh, let's see, it's outside of my zone. It meets the metrics, but it's taking me to the areas that I don't want to go. So we're not going that way. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> when you're doing this job long enough, you start to realize that there are certain areas you want to drive to and certain areas that you don't want to drive to. So you create these boundaries for yourself, like what streets you'll drive up to, what like the furthest streets you'll go to, or certain areas or neighborhoods that you'll go to, just because you know those areas and you've been there before, you've experienced them and they haven't been pleasant. So you know, okay, well, I'm not going over there. Uh, and it's, sometimes it doesn't have to do with the quality of the neighborhood. It has to do with how bad the traffic is. Because sometimes the, there are areas where the traffic gets so dense. I don't know why it is. Maybe it's just in a very popular area. Uh, $25 for 14.2 miles to go right near the strip. No thanks. Yeah, so you have to really know know your neighborhoods. And you have to... So that's that just comes with that comes with the experience of doing the job uh, for you know for for a while you have to get you have to get the experience. They are like okay, so now I know what I want to do and what I don't want to do as far as this job goes. And at least that gives you that opportunity. You know, when I first started doing this gig work, which was you know many moons ago, they, the the apps didn't show you a map of where you were going you would get a uh, a pop-up that would only show you uh, how much money you were going to get and approximately how much time 
it was going to take you to complete the order. And that would be it. And there would be nothing else in the offer that was of any importance for you to know what you were doing. It wouldn't tell you the, it wouldn't even tell you the restaurant. It would just pop up and say, money, and this is, this is the, how long it should take you to complete it. It was terrible. And you would end up bouncing all over the city because you didn't know, you didn't know. You just were like, okay, well, next, and you just accept anything. So your acceptance rate was really high uh, uh, back then because you would just take just about anything because you, the information they gave you was just money. So all you could really do is go on, well, I'm not going to take less than this dollar amount. And that's it. <laughs> it was a pretty bad system. And uh, it wasn't until, I think it was like maybe here in Vegas, I think it was, I think it was during the, the pandemic or just before the pandemic, things started to change, I noticed. And it was because there was a, there was such a shortage of drivers during that time that they had to do something to entice people to do it. And then I think there was also like, there was the pressure of legislation and stuff like that about how, how they're not we're not employees of these companies we're contractors and so and so there was just all this pressure and i think i think there are multiple stress points that cause these companies to give us the kind of information that we need to really make a good decision on whether or not we want to take these offers i know that doordash has always been the, the first one to be up front about um uh, about where you're uh, about what what kind of offer it is and where you're going and all that and then it took a while and then I think then uber followed along after them I believe seven dollars and a penny for 5.6 miles now and uh, and then they all followed suit so it's so weird how how if you do this job long enough you can just see you can just see the evolution you can see the transformations that these jobs do as we go through the ups and downs and the of the um, of the economy and and of the demand of drivers and the demand from the customers of, of of how they you know how customers really want this service a lot of the targets now they're they're putting in these these um, these uh, setups now where people can just drive up and pick up their their groceries from Target or whatever they buy from Target they have these whole stations that they're building out uh, the, the one over here on Eastern near um, Silverado Ranch Road it's a, it looks like it reminds me like of an airport an airport carpool station two dollars seventy cents six point six miles now and uh, I I think it's I I'm not sure but I believe that whole section that they're creating is going to be used for not not just for customers but for delivery drivers to park kind of like with walmart what walmart has with their spark program where you park and then they bring you this they cart you the stuff out i think they're doing the same thing uh at at the uh at the targets now they're trying to build these special parking lot locations where drivers can pull up and park at a at a numbered stall and then a target employee will cart you out your order and and load you up so you can so you can do it so it's like a they're copying walmart because they see how successful it is with walmart and obviously targets in big trouble they've been losing a lot of business because they're not adapting to this new customer uh, uh demand this new thing that customers want from their uh from the from the businesses so so they're slowly adapting so that's a new thing that i'm seeing happening so it's pretty cool we got our next one from Uber Eats. We're gonna go to Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. We're gonna get seven dollars and eighty-nine cents for two point eight miles. Let's get on down there. Well, we're back at the district again, and we gotta hopefully find a parking spot that's right near the restaurant. Is this a parking spot? Wow, we got one. This is awesome. Let's go in.
quick and easy. Almost accidentally completed the order <laughs> while I'm still here at the pickup location. That would have been really bad. <laughs> really bad. So we're going to be going uh, four minutes from here, 1.4 miles. It's a, it's a uh, business and obviously it's going to be uh, handed to me. So let's get down there. All right, well, they said they'll be standing outside, so it just should be a quick handoff. Oh, I think I see them. Let me just get right over here. Hello. How are you? Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye. Excellent. <laughs> now I'm jumping on the freeway. We got another one from Uber Eats. I just got to make sure it's safe to merge and then I'll tell you about the offer. $7.33, 3.7 miles and we're going to Starbucks. Let's go. We're pulling into another Starbucks. We don't go to this Starbucks that often. So this one I like. They're real efficient normally. <laughs> I can't say always. I better park over here to the right because there's a lot of activity going on and I just kind of want to park and start walking so I'll park far away and I'll just start hoofing it on down into Starbucks. We're gonna be going, to, it looks like, to a house. Six minutes from here, 2.2 miles, and it's a leave at the door, and we have a gate code, and they're saying I must enter off of Eastern. All right, let's go. Everything went fine as far as the pickup uh, in that Starbucks. Uh, the order wasn't ready. I had to uh, stand to the side and wait until they packed it all up but they did help me right away and i wasn't sure where to stand i don't know i've been in that starbucks before and i don't know why i ended up standing like in the wrong spot and i was like blocking the pathway and i didn't mean to do it i think i was just i don't know i was just combobulated because you when you stand at the at the um spot you know where everybody picks up the drinks you're trying not to stand too close to the counter because you know everybody's trying to get their drinks at the counter. And then you don't want to stand too far away from the counter because then you feel like you're blocking the through traffic that is just walking past the counter to go sit down at the tables or whatever. So you're kind of caught in this weird space of not being sure where to stand. So I thought I was standing, I thought I was standing in a good spot, but apparently this one girl gave me the, the, ah, uh, the guffaw. <laughs> you know, the, I'm disgusted that you're in my way. <laughs> like, why did you, why did you have to stand here? Don't you know you could, you should be standing somewhere else? <laughs> so it didn't really bother me. I was just kind of, um, you know, as a delivery driver, you just start to ignore things after a while. You're like, well, whatever. <laughs> but I did realize it was my bad. I should have really stood somewhere else because that was blocking the pathway. But I thought, <laughs> I thought it wasn't. So I don't know. Every nobody's perfect. We all do. We all make mistakes. So I'm not gonna be hard on myself and. <laughs> I give her props. I give her I give her the middle finger props. There you go, girl. This is for you. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's get in this. Let's get in this neighborhood. Woo-woo. Let's get in this neighborhood. 
Two. We're in another one of these fine neighborhoods. One of these fine townhouse neighborhoods where they look like houses, but they have to share a wall, it looks like. They're, some of them are like connected, and then some of them are not. Some of them are are their own standalone houses, but they have to share that tiny little road with everybody that's not that bad I mean I guess everybody has their own their own place to park their cars in front of their garages so that's nice but the they're the most they're the, the world's tiniest cul-de-sacs you've ever seen super small is this where I turn no one more they don't have any street signs either I guess they can't afford street signs Let's see, make sure I get the right address. Okay. Uh, I see it. I see you. I'm going to park like this and drop it. I don't know if you if that was caught on the video, but I stepped on a rock as I was about to, you know, take the picture and I almost slipped and fell. <laughs> I guess the rock that I stepped on with my right foot was big enough to not um, was big enough that my it set my foot off of the ground. And I didn't realize it was there, of course. And then the rock started to crumble from, from me stepping on it. And when it crumbled, it made like dust. And then, and then because the house is, at, is a little bit at an incline, I started, <laughs> I started to slide down. My, my foot started to slide down and, and uh, I had to take, shift my weight off of that foot as fast as I could. And that made me almost do the splits. <laughs> but uh, everything worked out. I can't imagine. How could I do this job like in my late 60s? I won't, I won't have that kind of reaction time to be able to compensate for something like that. And I'll just end up just toppling over. Maybe that's why you, I, I don't see that many people who are very elderly doing the delivery work. Maybe a lot of them now just do Uber X and Lyft. Maybe they just drive people around, pick them up and drop them off. Because with that job, you just sit in your car and then you could always tell them that, you know, you can't pick up the luggage, you have a bad arm or you're, you, you have a shoulder injury or whatever. And you can just let them know. And even if it affects your tips, who cares? <laughs> So, and then sometimes when you're older, they, re they recognize that you're older and they, they don't, they don't, it doesn't affect your tip sometimes. So, whew, man, I don't know. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just stop do, doing this when I turn 60. So, who knows? Maybe I'll still be in good shape though. You know, sometimes us Asian people, we can go a real long time before having any problems. Well, we're still just waiting. Nothing's coming in. I think I figured out my sunscreen issue. And I've managed to, to uh, now be able to apply my sunscreen in such a way where it doesn't uh, get in my eyes. So I have, uh, I, I guess I have uh, chubby cheeks. And when I smile or or See how I move my, <laughs> see if I smile. See how this like goes up? And actually the, the cheek right here, when I s smile will actually get so close to my eye that it will start to transfer the sunscreen into my eyes. So I have to go just a little bit lower in the application of the sunscreen, knowing that I have a lot of cheekage and that cheekage gets really close to my eyes 
kind of like Santa Claus. You know how Santa Claus has those 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 cheeks. You know the Santa Claus and the Christmas cards. I have like Santa Claus cheeks. So when I smile, the cheeks puff up real big and they get real close to my eyes, <laughs> and so that causes um, the sunscreen to get in my eyes. So now I figured that out, and uh, I haven't had any problems. Time is 8:23 a.m. It's 104 degrees. Uber Eats, six dollars, two cents, six point five miles. No. Time is uh, ten thirty-three a.m. and we're on our way to Tropical Smoothie Cafe. This is from Uber Eats, and we're gonna get ten dollars and fifty-three cents for three point eight miles. Let's get on over there. Okay, so I went ahead and I hung out at home for a little bit and worked on the editing of the video and i got about 40 minutes of edited footage so far so that's about the bulk of the video already uh all set up and ready to go so i was very happy about that and i just had a little bit of lunch i had a i had a uh, homemade uh veggie burger made out of black beans and vegetables and that was really good with a little bit of uh, lettuce and tomatoes and that was delicious so it worked out really good and then I started watching uh, the little rascals on YouTube and the three stooges uh, I tried watching the business channel for a while but it got boring so I said oh I'm gonna watch something something more relaxing so I put on that the and the, I just I love watching those old really old shows from a long time ago because it has no connection with the present day and it really helps you to like have an escape to another world or another time and it just helps to de-stress and relax me so i did that and then uh tons of offers came in but i'm doing right now because i'm doing so well already i'm just uh i'm just looking for a minimum of about ten dollars and two dollars a mile so this one came up and it it was uh, it it matched what I was looking for, so I went ahead and took it. And it's still so early. I still have all the way up. I'll probably work just until noon though, so I have about an hour and a half uh, uh, left in my shift before I'll be done. And uh, the weather's been okay. We got uh, we got cloud cover helping out. It's 106 degrees right now, so. It's not too bad for 10.35 in the morning. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully it starts to cool down this weekend. The weather forecast says we're supposed to cool down into the low 100s for the high, which will be nice. And uh, I don't, the forecast doesn't say rain today. It says 17% chance of rain tomorrow. But I never trust the, the weather here. The moment I see clouds, I just think automatically it's going to rain. Because the rain, I've seen multiple times here where they said 0% chance of rain. And then all of a sudden it just pours rain. Because that's how the weather is here. It's so unpredictable. All right, we're pulling up here into a Tropical Smoothie. Let's go get it. I have the order six minutes, 2.6 miles. It's a house and it's a meet at the door. Let's go. Well, the order was ready to go and I was able to just walk on in and, and grab it. So, and it's just three smoothies. So should be pretty simple, simple handoff. And uh, the, the drive's gonna be real short. We just got about five minutes till we get there seems like a lot more people are coming out right now because I guess they feel like the, the weather's cooling down or maybe because it's Friday 
everybody's just in a mood to just go out and spend a little bit of money. I noticed today is probably the busiest it's been in the last couple of days, so that's a good sign. At least things are still moving along here, and it's still a money-making business, I'm happy to say. I'm glad to, I'm glad to say we're not in a, in a drought when it comes to uh, delivery opportunities, so that's good news, because... If this were to dry up, then what would I do? I'd have to, um, I'd have to maybe drive people around or something, or I don't know. I wouldn't do Walmart. I'll tell you that much. I got that Walmart Spark app on my phone, and I'm, I'm approved to do stuff for Walmart Spark, but I'm never gonna use it. They're eventually just gonna kick me off the app. It's, it's a terrible. Uh, it's a terrible uh, setup they have with Walmart Spark. There's nothing appealing about it. I mean, if there was no such thing as Uber Eats and DoorDash, of course, you'd have no choice but to accept the conditions that are presented to you at Walmart Spark. But since you can easily compare the uh, the two app, the apps, you can easily compare. Uh, DoorDash and Uber Eats with Walmart Spark, it's like night and day. You've got one app that totally is uh, showing you all the information you need to make a decision. And you can predict, how, in general, you can predict on average how long it's going to take you to pick up and drop off and complete an order. And then you got Walmart Spark, complete mystery. <laughs> you have no idea how long it's even going to take you to get to the pickup location, let alone how long it's going to take you to get your merchandise from Walmart. It's a complete question mark mystery. And uh, there's no way to, there's absolutely no way to gauge how long it's going to take you to complete a, a Walmart Spark order. It could take 30 minutes. It could take an hour and a half. It could take three hours. You have absolutely no idea. And uh, as far as the money goes, even once you complete the order, they don't give you the tip until 24 hours after you've completed the order. 24 hours. I thought Uber Eats was bad having you wait one hour. It's 24 times as long you have to wait for your tip, which is crazy. And then of course, DoorDash, you get your tip right away. I mean, yeah, DoorDash, you get your tip right away. So no thanks. Walmart Spark, you are you are off my list. You and Chick Fil A are off my list. All right, we got only a couple more minutes till we get there. All right, we're getting close to the drop off. We're in a community that didn't have any gate or anything like that. I just turned on in. It doesn't seem to be like a bad neighborhood. It's not too bad at all, really. The streets are nice and wide. I'm going to be making a right turn here at the stop sign. I think it's going to be the second house on the right. Let me see. Uh, is it the second or the third? Let's see here. It is the third one. Okay. We are here. Let's drop it off and move on. That delivery went just fine. The person eventually showed up at the door and they got their stuff. So we're on our way now to uh, Farmer Boys from Uber Eats, $10.95 for 3.4 miles. And it's Farmer Boys. You know the food isn't gonna be ready. It could be a long wait. So we're gonna have to be patient. Let's go. The weird thing about Farmer Boys is 
I don't know why, but whenever I get there, the order hasn't even been started. It's like they wait until you get there and then they start the order. And I don't, I'm not exactly sure if it's because they want the food to be really fresh and hot or if it's just because they have, they prioritize customers who are actually physically at the restaurant over delivery drivers. I haven't been able to really figure out why they, why they do it. I do know because I've gone as a customer to Farmer Boys and I know that when you get there and you order the food, it takes a long time to get it. Even as a regular customer, I've gone through the drive through I've walked inside and it's always the same situation. You order what you order your food and you wait and you wait a very long time. Sometimes you'll wait as long as 20 minutes to get your food and sometimes you'll sit in the drive through for 20 minutes just waiting for them to finish it and then you finally get it so it's it's the it's not really like a mcdonald's or a jack-in-the-box there's something that causes their preparation process to be hella slow (laughs) i don't know why all right we got a couple more minutes and we'll be there was ready Ooh, that was a miracle got the order five minutes from here 1.9 miles requires a pin a meet at the door it looks like a, looks like it's a business so something about building on right side of steel structure last door so and to meet at the door let's go okay great thank you so much have a good one all right we did it let's go so far, we haven't made any money on DoorDash. Uber Eats, $11.07, 8.6 miles. No, we haven't made any money on DoorDash. DoorDash has been has been non-existent for today. Uber Eats, 5.46, 3.3 miles. No. Yeah, I don't know why. Uh, I don't. I never really understand why all of a sudden one app will be dominating over another one. Um maybe maybe online they offer specials because you know everybody uses the same apps and they go back and forth to figure who has the cheaper the cheaper deal or whatever and maybe they put out ads or something where people can people can get like free um i don't know free something (laughs) 11 21 8.7 miles no yeah they must put out some type of promotional discounts of some sort you know no delivery fee or something you know even though we actually get the delivery fee they just they put out on their end that they're not going to have to pay it but they always pay it on our end it always comes up but they must eat eat the loss or something just to get the business seven dollars and fifty three cents three point seven miles i want at least ten (laughs) dollars $10 $10 minimum because it's so busy today and because it's busy I'm not taking the freeway back to the hot spot I'm going on the street so it's taking it's going to take me longer to get back to the hot spot but sometimes when I'm over here I still get good offers so it doesn't usually hurt me to take the take the slow boat <laughs> back to the hot spot so that's what I'm doing I'm just going and taking my time and Hopefully something comes up, and if it doesn't, it's okay. Oh, we hit 110 degrees. Woo-woo, it's so cool. Oh, where's my blanket? It's so cold. (laughs) All right, I'll let you know when something happens. All right, everybody. Well, work has dried up, so 
I'm calling it and we are wrapping up. So thank you so much for uh, watching the video today. Take a look at the numbers above and you can see how many um, miles we drove, miles per gallon. You can also see how much money we made and our hourly rate. And below you can also see uh, all the ratings from DoorDash and Uber Eats, including cancellation rate, acceptance rate, and um, total lifetime deliveries, all that good stuff. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again on the next one. Okay, bye for now. Take care. Mm -hmm.